Hey, Codebusters fans, are you ready to take your cipher solving skills to the next level? Absolutely. Scioli.tools. It's easy to remember and packed with resources. It's S C I O L Y dot tools. All right, so let's uh, let's jump into columnar ciphers today. If you're prepping for Science Olympiad, um, you're going to see these in the Codebusters event. Yep. Um, basically, think of it like a, like a puzzle mm -hmm. where you've got to rearrange jumbled up letters right. to find the original message. It's more about the order of the letters being all mixed up. Okay. So we're talking about uh, taking the original message and like putting it into columns, which is how the columnar part comes in. Oh, okay. So imagine like taking a sentence yeah. and writing it out like vertically, column by column, instead of just straight across. They add in some extra letters, usually X's, just to make all those columns the same length. Okay. So now you've got this grid of letters, but the real secret is figuring out the right order of those columns to make that original message reappear. And that's where the crib comes in, right? The crib is like your key to unlocking the whole puzzle. You use it to figure out how the columns should be rearranged. Like finding those corner pieces in a jigsaw puzzle. Suddenly things start to fall into place. Exactly. It's all about like finding that pattern. And once you have the columns in the right order, the rest is easy. You just read across row by row. Oh, okay. And the hidden message like reveals itself. Okay, so enough metaphors. Let's get practical. Mm -hmm. What's the first move? First, you got to count every single letter in the message. Even though it seems simple, why is that so important? Well, it gives you the dimensions of the puzzle you're going to solve. Then you move on to step two and find the factor. Factors? <laughs> yeah. You know, like what numbers divide evenly into that letter count? What's next? Choose one of your potential column counts and start writing the encrypted text into columns based on that number. Then comes the exciting part. We look for your crib. We scan the rows to see if those crib letters are all together. Yeah. It's like trying different keys to unlock a treasure chest. If they're spread across rows, it means you got to go back and pick a different factor. So it's like trial and error until you find the right match. Yep. I can imagine that feeling of finally seeing those crib letters all in a row. It must be so satisfying. It definitely is. Okay, I'm ready to try my hand at this code breaking thing. What have you got for me? All right, so let's say you're at the Science Olympiad and you get this encrypted message. Okay, let's see. Where do we even start with this? Like always, we start with the basics. Count the letters for message. Remember, no spaces. There are 36 letters. Perfect. Now, step two. Finding all the numbers that divide evenly. And so we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 9, 12, 18, and 36. Right, but there's a twist. The Science Olympiad rules say that the number of columns in a columnar cipher has got to be between 4 and 9. So anything less than 4 or greater than 9 is out. Exactly. And here's another shortcut. The length of the crib gives you a clue. The rules say it can be at most one letter shorter than the number of columns. Hold on, let me think. So if my crib is five letters long... I can ignore any factors greater than six because the max number of columns is six. So now we only have four and six to try. Okay, so we've got our potential column counts. Time to arrange these letters. Right, let's try four columns first. Right. If we divide 36 letters into four columns, each one will have nine letters. Do you see your crib, A-Y-U-P-H, all in one row? Hmm. I'm looking and I don't see it. The letters are all over the place. Okay, that means we need to go back and try a different column count. It's all part of the process. Back to the drawing board. Let's try six columns. Now, six columns and 36 letters means six letters in each column. Tell me what you see. Okay, six columns are done. And wait a minute, I see it. Look, in the fifth row, there's A, then Y, then U, PH. We found it. Awesome. You're a natural. Now just rearrange the column so the crib spells A, Y, U, P, H. Correct. Okay, moving the A column to the front, then Y, then U, P, and H. Wow. It's amazing how they suddenly make sense when you put them in the right order. Now for the final step, read the rows from left to right. Somewhere over the rainbow way up high. You did it. You navigated that columnar cipher like a pro. I got to say that was actually really fun. And the feeling of solving it is awesome. Ready for some pro tips. Remember where those X's were in our example? At positions 6, 12, 24, and 36. All multiples of 6. It's like a little whisper telling you, hey, 6 columns might be the way to go. Right. If we had noticed that right away, boom, straight to the answer. That kind of thinking can save you precious time in a competition. Another one is what we call early mismatch detection. Pay close attention to your crib letters as you're writing out the columns. So if I notice the crib letters are messed up even before I finish a column, I should just stop and try a different column count. Exactly. The sooner you recognize a mistake, the less time you waste. These tips are amazing. It's all about speed and accuracy, right? You got it. I feel like I could tackle any cipher now. That's the attitude. But before you get to those advanced techniques, you got to master the basics. Right back to basics. We talk about finding the length, 
the factors, arranging the letters into columns, and looking for the crib? That's when the real magic happens. Read the rows from left to right. And the more you practice, the better you'll get. Speaking of practice, any tips for our listeners on where they can practice more? Remember that Sciolee.tools website, it has tons of practice ciphers for the Science Olympiad. Right. It's S-C-I-O-L-Y dot tools. I think that wraps up our deep dive for today. But keep practicing and keep those minds sharp. Until next time, happy deciphering.